Hey guys, it's Jen. I hope you all had a great week. So today's video is going to be all about some high-end, more luxury products that I've been testing out over the past couple of weeks. And um, before we start, I just want to mention quickly that I am sick. I've been battling a cold all week. It's definitely been a week. There were two days where I was just like in bed because I couldn't even like function. It was just so bad. So um, I am feeling better now, but now I'm kind of in that more cold phase where my nose has been going nonstop and it's kind of like in my throat. So if I sound off or weird, that's why. But you know, the joy of having kids in school, I definitely am like looking back fondly on those days when Henry was a baby and he was just home with me all winter and we really like didn't go anywhere and didn't catch anything. It was, those were the days. So anyway, Anyway, today I have mostly makeup with a couple of skincare things thrown in. Um, I have a ton of foundations. There were so many foundation launches this fall already um, that I have five high-end ones to share with you today and um, definitely some hits and misses. So why don't we go ahead and just start with those. Some of them were given to me in PR, other ones I bought myself. Um, so the first one I want to start with is the Kevin Aquan Foundation Balm and this is $52 which is kind of pricey. It comes in 20 shades and this claims to be a full coverage foundation with an innovative silky balm texture fortified with hyaluronic acid for a flawless finish in an extended shade range. So as you saw, this comes packaged in a jar, which is really great for travel. It's not messy or anything like that. It also comes with a little buffing brush, which is good. It's not the best way to apply it, I feel like, because it's so small. It takes a long time to kind of cover your whole face because you really have to make small circles. So I I prefer to apply this either with a larger flat top buffing brush or a sponge, but you could use this in a pinch for sure. It's very soft and gets the job done. Um, it just takes a little bit longer, I feel like. So um, this particular formula, um, the pros of it are that it's extremely lightweight. It feels like nothing once it's on your skin. It's almost completely weightless. And as you buff it in, you don't feel like there's this big, thick, heavy layer of foundation, yet it gives incredible coverage. I was super surprised at really how much coverage this gave for being as lightweight as it is. And also one other thing that I liked about it, um, it's unscented by the way, that's another good thing. And also I liked that it didn't have that greasy feel that sometimes cream foundations that come in a pot or a jar like this have where they just feel so slick and like tacky all day. This one dries down to more of a powdery finish, but unfortunately for me, that was the downfall of this foundation because I do have really dry skin and I have mature skin. So this did a couple of things that I didn't like. First, I'll show you a shot of it on my chin. Now, my chin does have kind of a textured appearance. It has that orange peel effect. So a lot of foundations don't sit very nicely on it. That's not really the foundation's fault. But I did also see that this kind of clung to like baby hairs on my skin and just made it look a little bit cakey in the chin area. And then moving on to my cheek area, I felt like this actually did sit really nicely on my cheeks. It didn't accentuate my pores, which was a really good thing. Um, but then again, on the forehead, it just kind of made my forehead look dry. It made my lines look more prominent, which I wasn't crazy about. And I think that's just due to the cream to powder formula because something that maybe plumps up the skin a little bit more is a little more hydrating makes those lines kind of go away which you will see with some of these other foundations so um, for me unfortunately this one just didn't work out it's not to say that it wouldn't work on someone else because I think if you're a little bit younger if you don't have um, you know the texture on your face if you don't have um, fine lines and wrinkles I think this is a really nice option especially if you like more of a full coverage look but you don't like heavy, heavy makeup looks. It's just really light and seamless. So I did love that about it. I just think it's not a product for me personally, but I do think there are some definite benefits to this one. And then moving on, I got the new Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. And I went into Sephora a couple weeks ago and they had a full display of Charlotte Tilbury. And I have never tried any of her products before, even though I've wanted to. They're just more on the expensive side. And I was always hesitant to just order something online that's more expensive. I like to go in person and play with things a little bit first. And so I was so happy to see the display and I played with a whole bunch of different things, was testing stuff out. They were probably like, what the heck are you doing? People kept coming up and asking me if I needed help. Um, but anyway, this is one of the things that I got because there's been a lot of hype around it. So it's $44, it comes in 44 shades, and it claims to be a hybrid skincare foundation, and it contains Charlotte's magic matrix of ingredients, including the groundbreaking magic replexium to reduce the appearance of wrinkles. This hydrating lightweight formula is sweat proof, humidity proof, waterproof, and transfer resistant. It also has something called Moss Cell Tech Number One, 
sun, which helps to thoroughly hydrate the skin, and air cool, which is like something that they trademarked, um, which provides an immediate fresh feel on the skin. So I didn't notice any cooling going on with this, but anyway, this one's in the shade 3 Cool. And I mean, like all of her products, it's packaged beautifully. It has this nice frosted glass bottle. It has a pump, which I love. Um, so this one, the pros of it are that it has really nice coverage. A little bit of this goes a long way. I tried not to apply too much because that usually results in a cake face for me. So I felt that even a little bit of this gave me really nice, like medium to full coverage, which was awesome. Um, it has a nice satiny finish when you first apply it. And when I first applied it, it, no matter how I did, whether it was with a sponge or a brush, it looked beautiful um, immediately. And then after a little while, whenever I would go look in the mirror, I felt like my skin just looked like it had makeup on it. Um, so that's something that I'm usually not going for these days. I usually like something a little bit more natural that looks really skin-like, and I didn't feel like this had it. I also felt like it made my skin look really dry as well, which is kind of the opposite of the claim. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you some photos in natural lighting so that you can see like on my chin area it just looks cakey and makeupy I feel like really almost like I'm wearing a mask on my cheek I also felt like it gave me those polka dot pores like you can really see my pores more than you could like with the Kevin Aquan one and then on my forehead too same thing I just felt like my um, fine lines on my forehead were just really prominent um, so I was really sad about that because I was really wanting to like this but um, I have heard similar results from other people so I may go ahead and just return this because you know I've tried it so many different ways and just can't really get it to look nice and natural on my skin I don't think that that's necessarily the foundation's fault either more than just a personal preference of mine um, but I was just hoping based on the claims of like minimizing fine lines and wrinkles and and plumping up and hydrating your skin I just thought that it was gonna be more of a match for what I was looking for but it just isn't sadly so I felt like for me at least this didn't really live up to the claims but if you've tried this I'd love to hear your thoughts on it down below because I've seen a lot of mixed reviews and then next we have the Zoeva Authentic Skin Foundation. I was so excited to see Zoeva come to Ulta, and this is actually available at Ulta now. It just launched, I think, last week, but they sent this to me several weeks ago now, so I've been testing it out for a while, and they sent me three different shades. I think one was number 10 cool, then I have 20 cool, and then 90 cool. So 20 cool is supposed to be um, very fair cool toned, and then 90 is supposed to be a light cool tone. So I feel like I'm somewhere in between these two shades and they had put a note in with this too that said that you know they didn't want to send me the whole range because it's kind of wasteful but that if none of the shades they sent me worked out they would send me another one I found that just mixing these two together gives me my perfect shade match so I wasn't gonna ask them for an additional bottle when this works just fine so I've been mixing these two together um, kind of a little bit more of the 90 with just a little touch of this and I find that that works out perfectly this foundation does oxidize though so you might want to just order one shade down from what you normally do but anyway I'll just redo the claims really quick so this one says available in 44 shades with a variety of warm cool and neutral undertones this radiant foundation has an innovative lightweight formula designed to maintain the skin's natural protective barrier while evening out the complexion and allowing your skin's natural luminosity to shine through it contains squalene and rosehip oil which are really hydrating so I knew that this was going to be really good on my dry skin I didn't didn't really realize how much I was gonna love it though oh my goodness this foundation is so beautiful it's it literally just kind of like melts into my skin and becomes one with it and it's such a skin like finish which is always what I'm looking for it does have I would say medium coverage and could definitely be built up to full I don't usually need a full coverage for the most part and a little bit of this goes a very long way so if you buy it I would definitely caution you to just use a tiny little bit I usually do like a half a pump of this and a half a pump of this and mix it together so it equals one full pump and usually I tap my finger into it like this and just dot it around my face and that's all I need and I still have a ton of foundation left on the back of my hand that I don't even use at all so definitely go in sparingly with this one first and see how it is because I think if you put too much I don't know if it ends up getting cakey I really haven't used a lot of it but you know just in case that happens to you maybe like start with using less and go from there but I just absolutely 
absolutely love how this looks so I'm gonna go ahead and show you pictures of what it looks like in natural light and as you can see on my chin you know my chin still has that texture but it's not clinging it's not caking it just looks like my skin but all the redness is covered up which is a good thing and then on my cheeks it doesn't accentuate the pores it covers my dark spots pretty well you could still see a little bit through but that's okay because I like my skin to just look a little bit more natural and like real skin so I don't like to completely hide every single imperfection and then on my forehead you can see that those lines are definitely minimized compared to the other two that I showed you where they really looked prominent now you can see that this formula just kind of plumps them up a little bit and makes them look a lot smoother so I think out of all the foundations I've tried recently this one is definitely my favorite it's also the least expensive I don't know if I mentioned the price but it's $28 so um, it's a little bit more on the affordable side I feel like it's in between a high-end foundation and drugstore oh and I also wanted to mention quickly um, this lasts a really long time on my skin as well now I'm more dry skin so foundations don't really break up on me that much unless they're like a really super slick formula um, but I can get probably at least like eight or nine hours of wear out of this I'm not the type of person that wears foundation for you know 12 hours or more um, so I'm not sure if it's like that long lasting but at least for what I need it for it's great it's beautiful definitely thumbs up for me and then another one I've really been enjoying is this Beauty Bakery Insta Bake Aqua Glass Foundation. And this one is $34, comes in 30 shades. I have the shade 351N, which is neutral. I usually try to go for neutral if that is an option because even though I have cool toned skin, I don't want my skin to look more pink or more red. So I try to kind of stay away from cool tones, but I also don't want something to be super yellow either. I found that this one was a little bit more on the yellowy side, um, but not too bad. Like once I blended it in, it seemed to be okay um, so anyway claims wise this says that it's inspired by the elegance and minimalistic approach to beauty that Japan is known for this lightweight vegan foundation is a force to be reckoned with rightfully named insta bake this full coverage formula effortlessly covers everything left in its wake delivering extraordinary performance the it applies smoothly like a layer of frosting. So this formula is super thin and runny. It's almost like a serum foundation, but not quite. So when I first pumped it on my hand and saw it, I was like, this isn't gonna cover very much, but it really packs a punch even for being a super light formula. So um, I would say it has medium coverage, could definitely be built up to full. It is one of those formulas that I felt like kind of stayed a little bit tacky and didn't completely dry down on my skin, which if that's something that bothers you, then you might not like this one. But I think that's why my skin liked it and why it was okay on my dry skin because usually foundations that dry down completely end up looking really dry on me and kind of sucking the moisture out. So this one didn't do that, but it also does feel a little bit tacky. So you might feel like you have to set this one if you have more oily skin, um, but I'll go ahead and show you the photos. And as you can see again on my chin, I felt like my chin looked really good. It hid the redness that I wanted it to without accentuating any kind of texture. On my cheek area, it looks really smooth as well. It didn't highlight my pores at all. And again, on my forehead, just like the Zoeva one, it really left my forehead looking very smooth, which is great. Really, the only negative thing I could say about this is that it didn't last quite as long as the Zoeva one did on me. After, I would say about six hours or so, I started to notice it breaking up a little bit on my chin area. And just around my nose, it was starting to wear off, which a lot of foundations do so I kind of expect that with most foundations but I was really impressed with the Zoeva one just because it really didn't wear off and I also feel like the um, Zoeva one has a little bit more of a skin like finish than this one does um, this one doesn't look makeup-y by any means but I just felt like I could still if I looked up really close I could still see that I was wearing foundation whereas the Zoeva one I really it just looked like skin so um, I do like this one I think I like the Zoeva one just like a tiny little bit better but I I think this one is really amazing too. And then the last foundation that I tried is the Anastasia Luminous Foundation. This one is $38 and comes in 50 shades. And this one claims to blur any imperfection, including discoloration and unevenness without caking or masking the skin's natural radiance. The easy to blend formula goes on seamlessly and leaves the skin with a perfected looking complexion free of flashback or oxidation. So I got mine in the shade 140N and I do think this one, even for being a neutral, looks really yellow. And I've seen in comments, like in reviews and stuff like that, that this 
range in general skews very yellow um, so I mean once you blend it in it looks okay I'm actually wearing this one today and um, I think it has decent coverage it has I would say more medium coverage they claim that it covers everything I would definitely not call this a full coverage foundation when I apply it with a brush or my fingers I get like a solid medium when I apply it with a damp beauty sponge I get even a little less than medium so um, then I have to go ahead and add another layer mainly to my cheeks where I have a lot of discoloration and I found the formula of this actually to be very interesting because it's called the Luminous Foundation. So I was expecting it to be like a dewy or glowy finish. It actually has almost more of like a satin to maybe even soft matte finish on the skin. I don't really notice any luminosity at all. So um, in a way that's a good thing because I don't like foundations to have shimmer in them. I feel like that really accentuates pores and texture and all that. But I wouldn't necessarily call this luminous either. So that was kind of weird. And also this dries down super fast. You really have to work quickly with it. When I first applied it the first time, I put some dots all over my face like I usually do. And by the time I got back to the first dot, it was already like starting to dry and I had a hard time blending. So when I apply this, I just work in sections. And just like if I'm applying it to this cheek, I just blend it right away and then move on to the next section of my face. Um, and foundations that are quick drying tend to look drying on me after a while. And that was the case, I think, with this one. It looks really good when I first apply it. It looks very smooth, very easy. Even. It doesn't look like it's settling into pores or fine lines. It also um, isn't cakey, which is definitely a good thing. It's very smooth on the skin. But I just found that um, over the course of wearing it for the day, it does definitely have that like I'm wearing foundation kind of a look on me. So um, I'm, you know, I'm kind of on the fence with this one. I don't think it's terrible, um, but I do prefer the Zoeva and the Beauty Bakery over this one. So I feel like this one was kind of in the middle, while um, the Charlotte Tilbury and the Kevin Aquan, I really just didn't like it all so if I had to pick one I would definitely go with the Zoeva followed by the Beauty Bakery for sure all right, so moving on, I got a couple more Charlotte Tilbury products that I've always wanted to try. The first one is the Hollywood Flawless Filter. This is $44, and it claims to be a customizable complexion booster that can be used as a primer, highlighter, or be mixed with your foundation to get a perfected dewy finish or glow. Inspired by the perfecting lens of social media filters, ingredients help to soften focus, illuminate skin, and make lines and pores appear smoother. So this comes in a beautiful bottle. It does have one of those doe foot applicators and I've seen people apply this all over just as like a foundation or a tinted moisturizer I would definitely not do that with this product just because it's way too glowy and I think it would definitely draw attention to pores and fine lines so I think it's kind of funny that they claim that this is gonna do the opposite of that because I did apply this as a primer a couple of times just under my foundation and once I was done I felt like every single imperfection on my face was just like glaring at me and I couldn't wait to cover it up with the foundation once I put the layer of foundation over it though um, it did give a really nice kind of lit from within effect so I did like it under foundation but how I love to use this is to just put a little on the back of my hand and then tap it on my cheekbones for like a really natural subtle highlight I think it's beautiful and it just gives like that lit from within glow without being too like stripey or anything like that I mean but it definitely packs a punch as far as highlights go I'm doing this without a mirror hold on let me just get a mirror in here so yeah you can see like it just gives a beautiful glow without being too much but if I'm being completely honest I also feel like this product is really hyped up and there's a lot of similar things on the market for a lot less money for example the L'Oreal true match Lumi Glotion I use this in basically the exact same way and it pretty much has the same effect you can pretty much do the same thing with this and get the same results like you can use this underneath foundation as like a glowy primer or you can just pat it onto your cheekbones in the same way and just get like a really pretty kind of lit from within glow. They have a couple of different colors you can choose from as well. So for me, I think this is a nice product, but I don't think it's necessarily worth the $44 just because you can get very similar ones at the drugstore. I don't know, just my opinion. I mean, I think it's nice, but again, kind of overpriced. And then another Charlotte Tilbury product that I got that I've absolutely been obsessed with is the Superstar Lips Lipstick in Pillow Talk. So this is unfortunately the only color it comes in now. I looked these up because once I tried it, I was like, I need more colors of this in my life. It's the most perfect, beautiful lipstick. If you have dry lips, if you have lines on your lips, it's like this super um, soft, cushiony, plush kind of textured lipstick that just 
fills in everything, almost like a tinted lip primer or something. I don't know, it's like magical. I've been wearing it in pretty much every video since I got it. You've probably seen just the same lip look over and over again because I love this formula so much. So I ended up looking up Superstar Lips and apparently it used to come in other shades, but most of them are sold out at this point. I think they were limited edition. So I'm hoping and hoping that she comes out with more colors of these because it's beautiful. It does have some negative reviews use at Sephora because of the size of it. Everybody's saying, you know, it's $34 for this teeny tiny little lipstick. I think it's 0 0.06 ounces or something like that. It's a really slim tube. That's all you get in here. So I think, yeah, I think it's definitely overpriced, but at the same time, I have never tried a lipstick formula that felt quite like this before. And you guys know if you've been watching me for a while that my lips are something that I constantly struggle with because they have so many lines in them. A lot of lipsticks just do not look good on me or they make my lips look extra dry and this one I just feel like it looks so nice so for me this is definitely worth the price if you don't struggle with that and most lipsticks look good on you then you'll probably think this is just a really overpriced lipstick but for me and like how magical this is and how beautiful it makes my lips look it's totally worth it I would definitely repurchase and I do hope she comes out with more shades and then next up I also got a palette recently this is the Dominique latte palette now it's not new it's been out for a long time but the reason that I got this is because um, I tried her rustic glam palette and fell in love with it the formula is so beautiful and I just love this because I love neutrals so for a lot of you guys this might look really boring but for me it's just perfect it's kind of almost like a fall palette in a way it has warm tones but they're not like super dark or rich warm tones so the whole top row is all matte shades really gorgeous matte shades and then down here you have three beautiful neutral shimmer shades and then you have basically two pops of color. You have this deep blue matte and then this purple matte right here. So if you wanna play with color, you have these two to play with, but the rest of the palette is just so neutral and it had amazing reviews on the Sephora website, so I decided to pick it up. I did use this for a look the other day, so I'll show you what that was. This was for um, the Dossier perfume video that I did. That's what I was wearing. And I love how the shadows applied. Like I said, I did love the Rustic Glam palette, so that's another reason I decided to try another palette from her. So, so far, very happy with this and neutrals are what I use most often, so I feel like I would get a lot of use out of it. I also got another new palette from Doll 10. They sent this to me recently, and this is their Rose Brilliance Face and Eye Palette. It's $44. I do have a coupon code for Doll 10's website to save 15%, which drops it to, I think, like $37.50 or something, so um, I'll leave that on the screen and in the description box below, but um, this is a full face palette. You have nine eyeshadows, a blush, and then a highlighter, and the description on the website says it's a brilliant palette of curated colors for the cheeks and eyes designed to add luminosity dimension and gorgeous color to your skin inspired by the divine feminine goddess energy and ultra complementary rose tones this luxurious face and eye palette is designed to bring focus to your features while providing an effortless application impeccable wear time and skin smoothing ingredients so again if you love a neutral palette this is a great one it also has those beautiful rosy tones that I love I'm wearing it on my eyes today and my cheeks actually um, and and this formula is definitely different from most other palettes I have in my collection. There's just something about the matte shades and how they're formulated. They have almost zero fallout. They're not powdery at all, yet they pick up easily with a brush, unlike those really hard pressed ones. So it's somewhere in between like the really hard pressed mattes that sometimes can kind of glaze over and they're hard to pick up and blend and then the super ultra powdery blendable ones. So these blend like a dream on the eyes. They're so easy to use and they just have this like really creamy velvety feel. So there's something very unique about Doll 10's mattes that I just love. And then their shimmer shades are beautiful too, but in a different way than what we're used to hearing about. Normally when people talk about good shimmer shades, they're saying like they're super shiny, you know, intense foiled shades. And I'm definitely guilty of that too, but I wanna stop doing that because a lot of people really don't like those super Super foiled metallic eyeshadows so if you have some texture on your eyelids if you have more mature skin you would really love this formula because these shimmers are just subtle enough to where you know they add a little bit of shimmer to your lids but they're not going to be overboard to the point where they're accentuating texture I feel like both them and the matte shades are just very smoothing on the eyelids so that's definitely something to consider it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea but if that's something that you're looking for I definitely would recommend Doll 10's formula they have a bunch of other palettes on their site too so if this one doesn't appeal to you they have others that have a lot of beautiful cool tones in them 
them. I have most of their palettes and I just really like their formula is definitely something special and something that I definitely can see myself using more and more the older that I get because I am starting to get kind of like a little crepiness on my eyelids and sometimes those super shiny metallic foiled shadows can accentuate that and make my eyelids look less than smooth. Also the blush is just a gorgeous pink color. It just kind of wakes up the skin which I love and then um, the highlight is a very subtle natural highlight and I also feel like you could use this on your lids as well because out of the shimmer shades that they have in the palette none of them are this light so if you wanted like an inner corner highlight or just something in the center to do more of like a halo eye you could probably just use this on your eyes as well. And then another product from Doll 10 that they sent me recently is the Effort Lash XL Lash Expanding Mascara. So if you've been following me for a while, you know that I love their Illegal Lashes Mascara. I think that one is amazing. I love this one, maybe even more than that one. This one is so good. I'm wearing it today and I'm just gonna show you a close up of the brush. It does have the plastic bristles, but these are super soft so they don't scratch your eyelids when you're trying to apply it. The wand is extra long, but it's also skinny enough that you can get right up to the base of your lashes. And I love that it's a little bit more on the thin side because it's not one of those big chunky ones where I feel like I'm gonna be getting mascara all over my eyelids. And this formula is a little bit more on the drier side. It's not a completely dry mascara, but it's not one of those super wet ones where you get really like a lot of clumpiness from it, but it still adds tons of length tons of volume it really gives your lashes a nice separated look which I personally like it just makes them look really fluffy so I'll show you before and after picture and you can see like it really makes a huge impact on my lashes and it makes them look so much bigger than they did before and it also lasts all day on me as well so is it worth paying $24 for when there's so many good mascaras at the drugstore I would say maybe it does almost everything that I want a mascara to do I do really love the super sizer from covergirl but that one doesn't quite fan out my lashes as much as this one does and I love that this lasts all day and a lot of drugstore mascaras even though they give me nice results and they end up smudging under my eyes after a couple of hours so I do like that this one lasts all day so overall definitely loving this one a lot and then before we go I just have two skincare products to share with you the first one is from first aid beauty they did send this to me complimentary and this is the KP bump eraser body scrub with 10% alpha hydroxy acid so this contains both glycolic and lactic acids at 10% plus pumice stone which is super finely ground so it's a super intense scrub I love the tiny grain size because I feel like that really effectively scrubs your skin more than those scrubs that have like the chunkier stuff that just kind of falls all over your shower as you're trying to rub it into your skin this one kind of stays with your skin and really gives you an amazing scrub plus the alpha hydroxy helps to chemically exfoliate as well so um, what I do usually is I put this on in the shower and I put it on the areas where I have the KP bumps like the backs of my arms and on my thighs and I just let it sit for a couple of minutes so that those alpha hydroxy acids can really get to work because if you rinse them off right away they don't really do much so I just kind of scrub it all in let it sit for like a minute or two and this has worked wonders for my skin it makes my skin so baby smooth and also I feel like my skin's gotten a lot more sensitive over the past couple of years but this really doesn't seem to irritate it at all it also has no fragrance which is a great thing if you're looking for a really good effective scrub even if you don't have the KP bumps just in general if your skin has like that dead dry layer on the top or if your skin is kind of more like rough and bumpy I would check this out because it's amazing and then last but not least, I also have a skincare product. This is from the brand Primera, and it's their Miracle Seed Essence. They did send this to me as well. Um, it's $58, which is a little pricey for an essence. Um, it does come in a pretty large bottle, though, that's going to last quite a while. It's five ounces. And I saved the box because I wanted to show you that they also include um, these cotton pads to apply it. They give you this whole box full of these cotton pads. So these are very super soft. I actually use them to remove makeup because I don't tend to apply my essences with a cotton pad I usually just take it shake a couple drops into my hand and then you know rub it like this and just press it into my skin that way I just feel like the cotton pad soaks up the essence and I don't want it to do that I just want every single bit of it to go to my skin so this contains 93.1% lotus seed water which is rich in amino acids and antioxidants it's great for like really dry skin as a first layer it helps to boost the skin's natural barrier it also has niacinamide as 
as the fourth ingredient after the lotus seed water. Um, so it's pretty high up there as well. And niacinamide is an awesome ingredient. I do feel like my skin is extra hydrated when I use this. Um, it's dewy, it's soft, and I love the glow that this gives me. I definitely notice a difference after a couple days of using this. Just that my skin looked and felt a lot more like healthy and plump. Also, it's very calming and soothing. If you have sensitive skin, there's no fragrance in here. The ingredient list is very short. But on the flip side, $58 is super pricey. So I feel like that's the one negative thing to this product is just the price. I do have other essences that I really like that I've gotten like from Soko Glam, from Aquel and Neogen that are a lot less expensive than this one. And I feel like those are really nice and hydrating too. But there's just something about this. I'm not sure what it is that just gives my skin like that extra little bit of glow. So I'll have to keep using it. I've really only had it for about a week. So we'll see how it goes. And I can definitely do a follow up review on this down the road if I still think it's worth it. But I feel like it's not a completely 100% necessary step in your skincare routine. I think it's more of a luxury. It's a nice thing to have for sure. Um, but I'll keep you guys updated. All right, guys, so that's everything. I hope you liked this video and found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And also, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments below if you've tried any of the products that I showed here today and what your thoughts are on them. I always love chatting with you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.